In episode 8 of the Skirmish War Games Hobby Vlog, we look at our brand new painting station and a host of potential Stargrave crew members, as well as some other cool stuff. Well, hi folks, this is Lee from SkirmishWarGames.com. I'm here with Lynn. Hello. And uh, today, I guess, is episode 8 of the Skirmish War Games Hobby Vlog. And we thought it would be fun to kind of show you some of the things we have on the paint table right now, now that we have a paint table. So for a long time, we had no permanent place to paint. We would paint outside when the weather was good. We would paint on card tables. We would paint on the kitchen table. But there's limitations to that, and you're always moving your paints around, and sometimes you can't find what you need. So we finally set up down here in the basement uh, two work tables. So we're going to show you our new work tables that we're really proud of. This is not as organized or as uh, extensive as some other people's uh, workstations, but for us, it's a marked improvement, so we're pretty happy about it. So because we have this now, we can uh, get onto some of our painting projects, including painting some of the stuff for Stargrave that is now only about a month away. So today, because we're due for a couple of days of nice weather, our plan is to uh, glue outside, and then tomorrow maybe prime, and then we'll have uh, figures ready to go for a painting frenzy here between now and the launch of Stargrave. So that's kind of exciting. Yes, it is. All right, well, let's quickly show you some of the stuff we got. Again, this is not the fanciest paint setup in the world, but we're just happy to have something. So this uh, plastic tower cabinet here on the left, uh, there's uh, two of these actually stacked on top of each other. Each one has three shelves, and they were four bucks a piece at Walmart. That's a good deal. That's a really good deal. So that's where I'm storing all my tools and paintbrushes and things like that. And then we splurged on a couple of Husky workbenches here. So we measured our space, and we're on a concrete floor that's here in the laundry room, actually. So there's a drain over here that you can't see. But we figured paint splashed on the concrete floor wouldn't make much difference because it's kind of dinged up anyway. So we got ourselves a couple of Husky workbenches. The one closest here is a 52 adjustable workbench, and the one on the far side is a 72 adjustable workbench. So outside of this table here being about 20 inches longer than the one I'm working on, the only real difference is while it's adjustable, you have to get in there and kind of remove the bolts and sort of move the legs up and down, whereas uh, the smaller one has a little crank to actually raise or lower it. So we'll see if that uh, makes much of a difference in the long run. And Lynn, I noticed you were so happy with your new table, you actually covered it in visqueen here. Yeah, I don't want to mess it up. This is probably a good idea, so you can laugh at me when I spill some uh, shade, some earth shade, all over my new table. Yep, snake bite leather, agrax, you know, That's the ones right. we've already spilled a couple times. That's right. So one of the real benefits to having a designated paint station is it allows us to take the paints out of the storage containers and actually put them on the table where we can see them. So we did manage to get most of the paints out on the tables, but since uh, space is finite, I was looking for some sort of a wall-mounted unit to handle the overflow. And kind of came across this thing here on Amazon, and this is actually a uh, nail polish holder for if you had a nail salon or something like that. But it popped up in the search when I looked for uh, Citadel wall-mounted paint racks, and many of the buyer reviews were actually from hobbyists using it for their Citadel paints and uh, Army Painter paints and stuff like that. So. And it fancies up the joint with all the scroll work. Yeah, we're a little rough around the edges, so we need as much filigree as we can get. But this rack here, it fits the droppers, it fits the larger bottles, it even fits these old-style uh, Citadel paint pots, and of course the uh, standard ones. So some of the stuff we use frequently, we put on the bottom rack, and some other things we don't use that often, we put a little bit higher, but uh, gives us another storage option here to uh, have all our paints out in the open as opposed to packed in a box. One of the things about painting on the kitchen table is we didn't have all the paints up there, and so there'd be a lot of instances where, uh, where is the Caribbean green? I don't know. So then some one of us has to stop painting, go downstairs, root around in a bunch of boxes to find the Caribbean green. And uh, yeah, this is better. Way better. This is a lot better. So yeah, I'm pretty jazzed about this. This is not the fanciest setup in the world, but it is a setup. And so now, uh, you know, we have no excuse not to finish some of our painting projects because everything's right here. And it's all organized. Well, mostly organized. Yeah, it's not bad at all. And certainly we can make improvements over time if we want to. One of the things we could do is look at overhead lighting, which I haven't done, so we're using these OT lights instead, which are pretty handy, so we just got a couple of those. Okay, let's take a quick look at some of the things we plan to be working on over the next couple of weeks, and uh, hopefully we'll have them done uh, in time for Stargrave, which was kind of the goal of this whole project. It's like, if we're painting on a card table, we're trying to wait for the weather to warm up enough to go outside, uh, we might not make it. Though the weather is supposed to be good for at least a couple of days, and then I think 
we're going to be in full springs and we probably would have been fine, but. It will serve us well in the winters to come. Yeah, that's right. Spring is around the corner, but winter will come again. Looks like you've gone for void. So yeah, over the last several weeks, we've been talking about options for Stargrave and we showed a bunch of uh, different collections on the channel. And I also have a bunch of other unpainted sci-fi figures kind of stashed here and there. And uh, I found myself sort of facing a crippling case of indecision. It was kind of weird because I knew I wanted to put a lot of effort into whatever we did. And I just didn't know which one to start with. And so after a lot of humming and hawing, I thought, well, I'm just going to go with Void because I haven't painted in a few months. You know, the kitchen table was not always available. And you've been painting. You had a card table in the living room, but I haven't been doing much of that. So I wasn't really ready to jump into something super technical with a lot of details. I wanted to kind of ease into it. And so I had these Void miniatures from about 20 years ago. Now Void is the uh, sci-fi skirmish game from i from about 2001 to 2004, kind of in that range, maybe a little earlier. But uh, I really like the minis and I like the aesthetic. And one of the things about the Void figures is they're all kind of smooth like marble statues, so they don't have a lot of little spikes on them or little badges or things like that. They're uh, nice and aerodynamic, but there's not that many details. And so I think I can get in there pretty quickly and kind of get back up to speed on my painting. So for example, here is a set of uh, Vasa Marines for Void. And as you can see, they're nice sculpts. They're really dynamic. You can tell they're in motion, but they're not that difficult. So uh, you can block out the clothing and the uh, flesh and the helmets and the weapons and things like that and be pretty much done and not have to worry about getting in there and uh, hitting every piece of scale mail or every little badge, every little purity symbol. So uh, this is what I'm going to go with. I like the figures. I've been meaning to paint them for a long time, and I think I have enough options to actually flesh out a Stargrave crew, which is kind of important too. So one of the things about Stargrave is if you're using recruits or runners, kind of the uh, free troops, they're in light armor with a pistol. And I found that sometimes that's difficult to find, just a regular old sci-fi mini with a pistol and uh, street clothes. But Void has some. So here's uh, some Void militia. Here's some more militia guys. But they also have special weapon troopers. So like here is a uh, sniper for the Vasa forces. Here is a uh, chain gunner. So both of those fit into the Stargrave crew roster pretty nicely. We have a couple of leaders. This person here can be a lieutenant. This uh, Captain Zed, he might make a good captain. And then I also have, this is from a different faction. This is from the Junkers faction. And I thought, well, maybe he could be a lieutenant as well. So while the rest of the uh, crew was all the same faction, he could be the one outsider. And he's the mystic with the uh, force sword, the energy weapon. So uh, maybe, we'll see what happens. But I pulled out enough minis that I can paint up a bunch. And uh, so if uh, certain crew members get killed early on in the campaign, then I can swap in some other ones. So that was kind of the uh, theory. And uh, we'll see how it works out. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, start it on Void. And then if there's time and my momentum is still going, then I can pull out some of the other ones like the, uh, oh, the undead astronauts or the old rogue trader figs or stuff like that. So we shall see, and I will report on my progress uh, as we go along. Uh, as long as there is some progress. If there's zero progress, then I'll never bring it up again. <laughs> All right, let's see what Lynn's got going on over here. So, Lynn, this is the gingerbread gang that you got for Christmas. Yes, it is. And they look good enough to eat. They do look like gingerbread. So this is one of the miniature sets from uh, War in Christmas Village. And if you remember, we did uh, Dead Rise in Christmas Village around the holidays, but we didn't have these guys. So maybe when uh, Christmas rolls around again... We'll uh, have to do some sort of scenario with the gingerbread gang, but they turned out pretty cool. And they're ready to go. They just need to be based, right? Correct. Here's something you just sealed. This was a barricade made out of old furniture that we got with our uh, terrain crate sets, right? One of the post-apocalyptic terrain crate sets. Indeed, yes. So, yeah, I like that. And you have a few other ones that are kind of uh, in mid-completion. They're works in progress. Yep, and some are done. Here is Comet the Chimp from Retro Ray Gun. I got this for your special. So I'm unsure as to whether Comet the Chimp is going to make it into your uh, Stargrave crew, but you're going to paint him anyway, right? I'm going to paint him anyway. I've got a bunch that I've got ready to glue. He's one of them. Yeah. And these are some figs you've glued together already and are about ready to get painted, correct? Correct. So here is one of your uh, Ratmen from uh, Mantic. 
This is also a Mantic um, Dead Zone figure. This is a Terraton or something, right? From the Rebs faction? From the Yeah, he's from the Rebs faction. So here's another Space Rat. That's one of the Veermen. And uh, then there's a Space Dwarf, one of the Forge Fathers, again from uh, Dead Zone. So these are ones you kind of selected and assembled because you didn't need 20 Space Rats on your Stargrave crew, but you wanted somebody on there, somebody to represent the underground dwellers, the cheese eaters. And keeping in the rodent theme, these are actually space mouselings, correct? Yes. So space mice to go with your space rats. In the hierarchy of mice and rats, who runs the crew? Are the rats in charge or do the mice run it? I think the rats might be the brute force. They've got the better weapons. Yeah, but maybe the mice have better people skills. That could very well be. Here's a tiny growler pup that you stole from our Vore box set. They're just adorable. And the uh, growler bull... I don't think that's the bull. So this is not the Growler Bull. The Growler Bull is even larger than this guy. So this is just one of the one horns, I guess. He's the complaint department. If you have a complaint about how we handle our crew, please consult the Growler. And then little tool bots from Reaper in case you need some uh, little helpers. These could also be runners or recruits too, if you wanted to have some robot recruits. Cheap, expendable tin cans. Don't say that around them. They'll get mad. They'll get mad. So here's a couple more Reaper miniatures. This is the Space Goblin Commando. And a uh, Space Goblin Mechanic. He says he's a mechanic, but I think he's either a safe cracker or a hacker. One of the two. In reality, mechanic is just his cover. All right. Well, you're starting to get the core of a good Stargrave crew there. So uh, we'll have to see what happens when some of these guys get painted up. And plans start to gel. You happy with the minis you've selected so far? Yep, I am. We'll get them glued together and see how they look. Make use of our good weather now that yes. spring has sprung. All right, folks. Well, that is a look at our new paint tables, which we're kind of happy with. And a bunch of miniatures that may or may not end up on our Stargrave cruise. But at least we're moving forward with the project. And sometimes that's the hardest part. So as always, folks, thanks very much for stopping by. We hope you enjoy this behind-the-scenes look at what we're working on. If you like the things we do, please subscribe to our channel. That's always helpful. And uh, give this video a thumbs up, which is good for the algorithm. And of course, you can also visit us online at skirmishwargames.com and check out some bonus content. So until we talk again, thanks very much, and we'll see you soon.